Calibration frames. What are calibration frames? Calibration frames are there to allow you to remove noise and other optical defects from your lovely light frames. So a normal light frame would be the actual object you're shooting. So if I was using a DSLR and I was shooting, say, the Orion Nebula, then the light frame would be the actual image of the object that we're photographing. What we have to do when we've got that image is we have to calibrate it to remove noise, to remove things like dust particles in the optical chain, and we have to remove other optical defects like vignetting from the image. Hi everybody, Andy here, hope you're keeping well. Calibration frames. I've got a DSLR here and I've got a dedicated astronomy camera. And I'm going to go through the different types of frames that you gather when you're taking pictures with astrophotography. So those types of frames are light frames, dark frames, bias frames, flat frames, and flat dark frames, if that makes any sense at all. Let's start with a DSLR. Now this is a very old DSLR that I've got and um, it's actually been astro modified. It has um, the infrared and UV filters removed on this camera. So on this camera, when you're taking your light frames, what you want to do is put the camera in M for manual mode. So you can see there it has an M for manual. Then when you're taking your light frames, so if we turn this on, what we have to do is set the exposure time on here. So I use astrophotography tool, so I have to put my camera in bulb mode. So I've got bulb just there, and you can see. Now bulb mode allows this camera to be controlled via astrophotography tool. So the light frames are just the pictures of the actual object that you're taking a photo of. So if I was taking a photo of Orion, the light frame would be the actual picture that we want. So it's the picture of the object in the sky. Those are your light frames. The dark frames are exactly the same as light frames. The only difference is that on your telescope, you've put the cap on the end. It's super important that your dark frames are exactly the same ISO and exactly the same exposure time as your light frames. So that basically they're the same parameters, but the only difference is you've put the cap on the end of your telescope or on the end of the lens that's on the camera. The other really important thing with dark frames is that they must be taken at the same temperature as your light frames. So in the winter time, when you're taking photos, you could have, say, uh, with a DSLR temperature of about five degrees. You want to make sure that when you take your dark frames, that they are the same temperature. So they must be the same ISO, the same duration, and the same temperature as your light frames. The next type of frame that we're going to talk about are your bias frames. Now bias frames are really important with a DSLR camera. The bias frame is basically a frame of just the background noise of the camera sensor. So on a DSLR like this camera, you change the exposure time to the shortest possible value that you've got. So on this camera, although it's in bulb mode at the moment, if I rotate this value, you can see I'm changing the exposure time all the way down to one four thousandth of a second. Now that is the setting if I was to take bias frames with this particular camera. It would have to be at one four thousandth of a second. And you can also do that in different software like Astrophotography Tool. Now a bias frame, all it is doing is taking the noise that is inherent on this camera sensor. And that noise, which is just on this sensor, is just a snapshot, it's just a quick snapshot of the noise. It is not temperature dependent, but the ISO must be the same. So it's the same ISO, the exposure time needs to be as short as possible, but it's not 
temperature dependent. The final calibration frames that you need to take are flat frames. Now flat frames are quite tricky to take initially until you get used to it, but basically what you have to do is either cover your lens or cover the front of the telescope with a white cloth, like a white t-shirt for example, and then have it very evenly illuminated. And then on the camera itself, you need to turn the dial from M down to TV mode, which we have here. I got that wrong, completely wrong. It's not TV mode, it's AV mode that you need. So, sorry everybody, I got that wrong. I'm a Muppet. The camera will then choose the correct exposure time for your ISO setting. So the ISO setting has to be the same again, but it's choosing the correct exposure time. Now flat frames are really important because they not only eliminate things like dust particles, but they also remove things like vignetting all the way around the edges of the image as well. So it's really important that you take good quality flat frames. Taking flats, first of all, we need to cover the telescope with a cloth. So I've got a white cloth here, which I'm just putting over the front of the telescope, and then just an elastic band to hold it in place. And then you just need to make sure there are no wrinkles there. Um, now it's an overcast day today. It's, um, it's not bad for taking flats actually, but what you want is basically not having full sun. You just want a nice white sort of sky. It's completely overcast. So I'm just going to point the scope up at the sky. The idea being that when you look at this, it should be completely um, evenly lit across the top. And then if I come around, I fitted the DSLR. Now, when you're taking flats, you need to make sure that nothing in the optical chain has changed at all. So basically your focus needs to be the same, your filters need to be the same if you had filters on, and everything else must be identical. Don't change the focus because uh, that will change where the dust potentially is in the whole of the chain. And also don't move the camera at all. Don't rotate the camera because that changes the position. Um, then if I now set this up so you can actually see, then on the actual camera itself, if I move this round, you need to change this knob here to TV. I just did it again. It's not TV mode. It's AV mode, look, AV mode. The ISO must remain the same. Okay, so I am going to now turn on the camera. It will automatically choose the correct exposure for these flats. And then you just rattle off about 30 of them if you can. And the idea is you just keep on going until you've got about 30 or 40 of them. And that's your flats done with a DSLR. It's as simple as that. Now, I'm just using a white piece of um, material here. You could use a white t-shirt. You can double up the material if you wish. The idea is that it's just being a diffuser. That's all it is, it's a light diffuser so that you've got a nice even field for the light entering the telescope seeing all of the dust and all of the bits that are inside the telescope and on your filters and so on. And then when all of that is stacked together, the vignetting, the dust and all of the artifacts are removed. So that's with a DSLR. So now I'm going to go and get an astronomy camera and we'll do exactly the same, only this needs a computer. We're now going to look at a dedicated astronomy camera. Now, a dedicated astronomy camera like this requires software to control it. And I use astrophotography tool to control my sessions and exactly the same as with the DSLR, you have to take your light frames, which of course are the image of the object you're shooting. You then have to cover up the front of the telescope and take your dark frames, which have to be at the same temperature, the same gain setting and the same duration as the light frames. So what you don't need to take with a camera like this are bias frames. What we take instead are flat darks. Now the flat darks are basically the same as flats. You cover the front of the telescope just as you would when you're taking darks, but this time you use the same settings as when you're taking flats, so that it's a dark flat. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, 
So now what we're going to do, I'm going to actually demonstrate taking flats with the one shot color camera. Okay, so I've now fitted a dedicated astronomy camera um, with my filter drawer and flattener on and I'm pretending that this is as it would have been in an imaging session. I've got the laptop out and I've connected it to the computer. So I'm going to adjust this camera so you can actually see the screen. Okay, so I'm going to go into astrophotography tool and what we need to do is go to tools and go to CCD flats aid and we need to work out our target ADU. So with this camera here what we have to do using a calculator we need to put 2 to the power of 14 and that will give us which is 16,384 and you divide that by 2 which gives us 8,192. So whatever the bit rate is of your camera you need to work out 2 to the power of that bit rate divided by 2. Then it tells you what percentage range either side of that. So I've just put 5% in there. Then it says what is the maximum and minimum exposure time that you want to put in. So I've got maximum of 2 seconds, minimum of 0 0.01 second. I've not got any binning turned on and I've not got region of interest turned on and then I wanted to do a flats count of 30. Now I can see that the uh, telescope is pointed towards the sky, it's got a nice um, flat field of bright light across the front and I'm now going to just click run. It will now run through the sequence here and it will take various exposures to find out the exact exposure time it needs to take accurate flats. So it's doing that right now. There we go, so it's now been through and it's calculated the exact exposure time and gain range that's required. And it says, do you want to create a new plan? So we do, so I'm going to click yes. And then when we go back into camera, we'll see it's created a flats plan here. And I'm actually going to just click start and it will then run through and create that flats plan. After we've done this, we then need to take flat darks or dark flats and to do that all we have to do is put the lens cap onto the front of the telescope and then run this plan again on exactly the same settings. Imaging plan finished. Okay so it's now finished the flats for me so what I'm going to do now is put this lens cap on the front of the telescope and then start the plan again. Okay, so that's how we take flats using a dedicated astronomy camera.